let's make sure this works. Hey, Carl. Hey, everybody. I think the show's live now. Okay, well, we're a couple minutes early, actually. That's awesome. Pretty Maybe awesome. we should just do this for like three minutes sure. and we could build up some steam so we could have a good show. Yeah, you sound like you're a little lethargic today there, Vinny. Oh, I am not feeling great. No? About anything, Carl. Uh-oh. I'm not happy. Is researching the worst people in the world uh, dragging you down a little bit? America's pastime. These degenerates. <laughs> there are. Hey. Oh, are you starting the show? Go ahead. No. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. Start no. The show. What were you going to say? You, you forgot about uh, Tucker's intro last week. We had so much My going board on. thing wasn't working. I couldn't play it. I Ooh. put it into the episode. Okay, cool. It was in the episode. Good, Tucker, good. you Bitch, stop complaining. Here's your fucking thing. <laughs> hey, everyone. Tucker Dixon here. And last week, we were turning Japanese. I learned that the land of the rising sun believes in second chance. Jesus Christ. That ain't it. That's the wrong one. Fuck <laughs> everybody. All right, here we go. Hey, everyone. It's Tucker Dixon, and I'm recapping here. So, was that a good New York accent? You know what? I don't care. Both Carl and Vinny brought in their own Frank. Carl's Frank doesn't like any of those end trains, so he decided he would just go ahead and shoot one up. Vinny's Frank was just another shitty creep. I, I could just make a whole list of poop jokes here if you want, or you can make them up yourself, or we can just move on. To my cousin Pat Dixon, who brought in a politician, Bill de Blasio, which was a good choice, because you know what? Fuck all those politicians. Now, for my creepiest New Yorker, it's all of you in New York. Seriously, every single one of you. Stop coming to Florida. Fuck off, we're full down here. Go somewhere else. Don't ruin my state. Just keep ruining yours. Anyways, that's all I got for this week. Tucker, out. Attention parents, what you're about to see is not suitable for kids. Shoot, it's not even suitable for some grown-ups. You might want to walk away now if you ain't into these type of things. I'm going to give the people what they want. Sensation, horror, shock. I'm going to deliver the goods because I'm alive and I'm not backing down. Cuckoo, cuckoo. The wind-up and the 2-2 two -two pitch. Oh, no, sir, wait a minute. The banner is calling for time. <laughs> Looks like he's going and getting himself a new bat. And now there's a beach ball on the field. <laughs> and the ball boys are discussing which one of them's going to go get it. I never realized how boring this game is. No. Disgusting, vomit-inducing thing. Hola, creep. Welcome to another edition of your favorite true crime podcast, the show about creeps by creeps for you creeps. I am your host. My name is Vinny. The tower of power, too sweet to be sour. The people's champion. And joining me in studio. Come on, pig. It's Carl. Yeah! Hey, what's happening, Vinny Paulino? Good to see you, my friend. I want to point something out about Tucker's intro there. Yeah. Tucker barely lives in Florida. He's in South Georgia. No one's trying to get into Jacksonville. Relax there, buddy. You're fine. Fucking every player on the Jaguars is trying to get the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to be in Jacksonville. You got the whole city to yourself there, buddy. Don't worry about it. I got to tell you, Carl, um, I realized something today. We are uh, going to talk about the vote in a second, but we are going to tell you that today's episode, we are featuring America's pastime baseball. Yes, because the All-Star game was last week, and why not celebrate baseball? We love baseball. I'm a baseball fan. Are you a baseball I'm fan? I'm a huge Chicago Cubs fan, as many people know. It's a very boring sport. It was, yeah. it was just pointed out in the intro there. <laughs> and what I did learn, though, is that the real show is on the fucking sidelines. Yes. The real show is off the field, Correct. and we're going to get to that in just a minute. But before we do, let's talk about last week's vote, which yeah. Carl somehow demanded be moved over to Reddit so that there would be no cheating. Yeah, so we actually have legit voting now, and look at what happened yet again. <laughs> Carl wins with 46. <laughs> yeah! 
46 to 45. That fucking vote stinks worse than the shit that my guy smeared at that woman's face on the What are you talking about? I won by one vote more than Pat Dixon. You beat Pat you Dixon had... by one vote? Yes. Bullshit you did. Of course I did. What do you mean? Bullshit That's a legit you did. vote right there. People to be signed in to vote. What do oh, you yeah. Think? Nobody has multiple. Oh, please. God damn this vote. God damn it. You think John's going out there with his sock accounts and voting for me? I mean, I don't think so. I doubt it. I don't think it's John, but think I think other John. people besides John have sock <laughs> accounts. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody, all the Cousaroos out there, for voting for me. I'm on a winning streak now. It's my second victory in a row. That's right, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that today I'm going to do everything I can. Make you humble. That's what I'm going to do today. I think this is the first time I've ever beat a uh, guest co-host. Yeah, that's why show. it stinks. Yeah, no, I think I brought a compelling argument. It stinks. I brought a guy who shot up the subway. It's pretty creepy. Pretty creepy antisocial behavior, if you ask me. Uh, my guy was also naughty. Yeah, I know. But Pat Dixon was the guest. Yes. And listen, man, I'm just saying, I've noticed our fans really like it when we lose the guests. I know. And all of a sudden, just one vote Carl wins by? I don't think so. How many were they supposed to win by so. for it to so. be legitimate? It's not legitimate. It is legitimate. It was rigged. Okay, all right. You know what I think about the vote on Reddit? I denounce it. <laughs> this is the big lie, guys. Vinny is spreading the big lie right Excelsior. now. Excelsior. True believers. Don't listen to him, kids. There's no evidence. You have no evidence of this. Mm -hmm. We need a committee. I'm going to get a committee together. Great. I bet you the ratings will suck. <laughs> well, it'll be exciting at first, and then it'll just drag on too long, but... All right, well, let's uh, let's move on and let's get into the game. Ring the bell and tell us who your fucking creepiest baseball player is. All right, Vinny. And try not to spit all over that microphone. I am going to bring to you a man who played for four major league teams, including my beloved Chicago Cubs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He retired from baseball in 1996. Here's a brief overview. It's Sammy Sosa, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Left fielder Mel Hall had a respectable 15-year pro career, playing for the Chicago Cubs, the Cleveland Indians, the New York Yankees, and eventually a Japanese team. He might not have been an all-star, but he still put together a solid career. He did put together a solid career, Vinny, and uh, 15 seasons in the major leagues. Mel Hall, he played for the Yankees starting in 1989 through about uh, 1993. And you know who was a fan of Mel Hall? When he was on the Yankees, Vinny. Whom? Our good friend Jim Norton, who's coming to the comedy club in just a, a few short weeks That's here. That's right, the weekend of August 13th. That's right. In fact, uh, Jimmy got his photo taken with Mel Hall. And in 2009, when he was convicted, they talked about this. He well, do? he's in uh, a bit of trouble. Mel Hall is in Dutch. Oh, boy, is he. What did he get, 45 years yesterday? Fucking ex-major league player Mel Hall sentenced 45 years for raping a girl. 12 years old. Oh, yeah, 12 years, right. And I guess five girls testified at his trial. Oh, is he in trouble? And we met Mel Hall. It's when, when I was we off no, the No, we era. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I just said we, we filed See, right is funny. <laughs> I didn't exchange emails with Mel Hall. <laughs> when we were off the radio, we I'm were, trying to remember. Did we really? I know. I, I got a photo with him. I remember it. Um, Mel Hall was convicted on three counts of aggravated sexual assault and two counts of indecency with a child. Among his accusers during sentencing were others who said he carried on inappropriate relationships with them. It was also reported that he once lived with his 15-year-old girlfriend, and not when he was 16. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, more of the backstory here. He was uh, coaching a basketball From my buddy Opie, I should mention. I mean, I can't even believe I have to listen to fucking Opie. I know. Let's listen to Opie on our show right now. He was uh, coaching a basketball team? But like a like a uh, an elite women's basketball team, I guess. Not women, and and somehow he he got in trouble with the twelve year old. Yeah, there's all all young girls. There's a bunch of girls that testified that he was like inappropriate with them. Yeah, this this was not a women's basketball team, Opie. This was a girls' basketball team. They're twelve year old girls that he was coaching. He was also coaching softball teams and having parties at his house, pool parties, being very touchy and gropey with the girls. And uh, so he was. He These was kids convicted. need a role model, and this man steps in to be that role model, and this is how we treat him. Exactly. Uh. Exactly right, Vinny. 
And this is more from the Opie and Anthony show talking about how he got 22 and a half years before he's even uh, eligible for parole. And he's got to do it. He's got to do at least twenty two. Twenty two and a half years before oh. he's eligible for parole. So he's got to do twenty two and a half really good years. Don't cut anybody in line. Oof. Don't fight because you're a pedo. Yeah. Don't yell. Nothing. Oh, no talking in the hallways. People nothing. Putting boogers in your food at the table. <laughs> There's no way they're going to treat him well. Stealing your crumb cake. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boogers. You put a booger in your crumb cake and you just got to take it. Take it. What are you going to do? You got to take everything they dish out. Yeah. Eat, eat around it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. All right. uh, I, I, mean, I am so appalled at your lazy preparation today. <laughs> what are you that, talking about? I mean, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> you, you don't think that playing the Opie and Anthony show on our show is a good idea? Because I do. I'm enjoying this. Let's talk about uh, more about what this guy did, this creep, Mel Hall. They, they, they said he was impressed with the 12-year-old girl's talent and wanted to start a basketball team. Oh. And there was a woman, I guess, Ooh. who trusted Mel and led him around her kids. She testified that Hall exposed himself to uh, her and her younger brother while their parents were away. It's like he took his dick out in front of her and her little oh, brother, God. and then he taught the girl how to perform oral sex. It's like Jesus. he was. Jesus. He was creepy. That's yeah. creepy shit, yeah. man. And, and he didn't get, his lawyer isn't that great. I mean, his life's over. Mel Hall goes to jail for the rest of his life. Yeah, if you get community service, you have a great lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> A great lawyer. So this you guy, have the lawyer. He did teach a twelve-year-old uh, how to perform oral sex, so it wasn't all bad. I but mean, do you know how many fucking teachers are doing that as we speak <laughs> right now? It's noon on a Monday. Yeah. Good point. Uh, all right, so yeah, so uh, two women who testified told similar stories of how he won their parents' trust and then charmed the young girls. One said she was fifteen, and Hall uh, was in her first season. Or I'm sorry, Hall was in his first season with the New York Yankees when the abuse began in 1989. The other testified that she was 14-year-old basketball teammate of the 12-year-old victim when she was raped in 1999. Hall has been charged in that case. This is fun. This is from the Wikipedia page. In 1991, when Bernie Williams was a rookie, Hall made fun of him by giving him the nickname Zero. He alleged that when Williams would talk, Hall would scream, shut up, Zero, at him and nearly make him cry. (laughs) (laughs) He was making Bernie Williams cry. Nice hit, Zero. In 1992, Hall hit 15 home runs, drove in a career-high 81 RBIs, and had a career-high of 163 hits in 152 games with the New York Yankees. During that year's Yankees Old Timers Day, he walked down to the field and asked manager Buck Showalter, who are these old fucking guys? <laughs> Showalter said, that's what I knew he had to go. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy was a problem, um, and this is kind of fun. So this is Anthony Cumia on the Opie and Anthony show doing his impression of the first, the first morning, <laughs> Mel what Hall. What a case you're making. <laughs> the Here's first... Anthony's imitation. Does it go a little something like this? This is Anthony doing the impression of Mel Hall the first day he wakes up in prison. I'd be asleep, dreaming. This is good. I was, oh, my God, I was having an awful nightmare that I was in prison. And I was, oh, oh this is, mm, this mattress doesn't feel as good as the one I, should I just waking up? As, I'm in prison! Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> in 2014, SB Nation published a long form article detailing allegations that Hall serially preyed upon and sexually abused numerous girls throughout his career. So, that's my creep, Mel Hall. Fucking 12-year-old girls. What do you got, Vinny? Uh, I'll see your 12-year-old. Okay. <laughs> You're going to raise me? I'm going to raise you a 22-month-old. We should do that sometime where we go back and forth with our stories and just keep escalating and then see who can go the longest. Well, Carl, yeah. my creep today played Major League Baseball as well. Mm-hmm. Seven seasons, in fact. He was drafted by the Chicago Clubs, spent some time down in Florida with the Marlins. The Chicago what? The Chicago Club foot? The Chicago Clubs. <laughs> Club Your foot. favorite team. <laughs> the Chicago Clubs. Yeah. Someone make that logo. I need that T-shirt <laughs> immediately. Uh, Florida Marlins, Milwaukee Brewers, and he won a World Series with the New York Yankees in 2009, Carl. I'm sure he had a lot to do with it. My creep today is Sergio Mitre. Yes. Now, Sergio, Sergio Mitre. Sergio 
at the time we're going to catch up with him, his career is over with. He's out of the majors. Mm -hmm. He had some trouble. He had seven good years, but then he had a 50-game suspension for drugs. And let me tell you about a little situation uh, that occurred in 2017. His ex-wife, Tanya, uh, went before the court in California and asked for a restraining order against him and for her children. The document reads descriptions of different moments in which, since she was pregnant in 2006, she was the victim of verbal violence, pushing and beating by Sergio. Right. And one of those episodes, she lost a baby when she was nine weeks pregnant. Oh, that's that's a problem. I was going to say, though, I mean, if you're marrying a professional athlete, you're going to get pushed around and yelled at a little bit. There's not always a punching bag available. Another <laughs> right. description refers to the player beating to death one of his two dogs. He oh, did God. this in front of Tanya and her two children. They also say that he grabbed his oldest son by the hair and dragged him down the stairs. Hold on a second. What type of dog was this? Was it at least a poodle, maybe? Is that better to yeah. beat a poodle to yeah. death? Yeah, poodles suck. <laughs> Chihuahuas. What kind of dogs do you like, Carl? <laughs> There's a lot of dogs I like. Like what? I, I don't want to get into it right now. Well, what kind of dog do you like? I like a golden retriever. Okay, it was a golden retriever. Oh, He fuck! beat a golden Look retriever to death <laughs> with his hands, this piece of shit. <laughs> And uh, he also uh, beat up his sisters when he was younger. He was violent towards his family. He was not a great guy. He grew up in Los Angeles and uh, spent his formative years in Tijuana. Okay. Now, another time, uh, Tanya picked up her children in school and did not return to the house when she basically left him. I fucked up my note there. Sorry. Okay. So uh, either way, he's divorced. His career is fucking for shit. Yeah, yeah. So he goes to Japan. Yeah, now, yeah. So my guy did too. He played uh, four seasons in Japan. In 2019, he uh, he goes to Japan and uh, scrubs out. Even though I think, frankly, this guy is perfect for that island. Yeah. And he goes back to Mexico. Okay. And he's playing for a team in Mexico now. In 2019 in Mexico, he was charged with uh, attempted femicide. Mm. which is just basically beating up a woman. Is that what that is? Yeah, murdering a woman. Mur okay, murdering a woman. Okay, yes. that's a, that's a so little different. So attempted, attempted murder of a woman. Femicide. Just And they actually have a, a description of this, because she's a woman. <laughs> so you're not allowed to do that in Mexico. We call them uncivilized. All these people are talking shit about Mexico, but yeah. they're the ones who really care about the women. So do you have uh, Anthony Cumia talking about this anywhere on your board over there, or how is this going to go? You didn't get Anthony talking about it or Jim I Norton? just saw Red for a second. I'm sorry, <laughs> folks. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I just was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> what an asshole. So <laughs> he's playing with this team in Mexico. Yeah. He's having the time of his life. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Everybody down there loves him because he won a World Series with the Yankees. So he's a fucking superstar. Okay. His team, the Saraperos de Satilio, mm -hmm. uh, which he barely played for because he was so out of shape and not good at baseball at this point. Okay. They just kept like him Kenny around. Powers. Yeah. They okay. kept him around to be the face of the franchise. Yeah. Because not every Mexican, you know, team had an MLB or, or uh, you know, a World Series champ. Sure. So he got charged with trying to kill this girlfriend in 2019, mm -hmm. and uh, he was arrested, but they let him walk free because apparently attempted murder of a woman, 20,000 peso fine. Oh, well, that's like 12 bucks. Yeah. That's not, that's easy. And he had to wear an electronic tracking bracelet. Now, I'd say he's a creep because he couldn't get the job done. Yeah. He's not a great guy. No. So later in the year. Not good at stuff. He, yeah, he's not. Not at baseball, not at femicide. Yeah, he's not right, great. exactly. So later, what are his femicide stats? 0 for 1. <laughs> so far. So far. Later in the year, another Sweet woman named Alejandra uh, also claims to have been raped by Sergio. She told how he kicked her, left her not breathing on the ground while laughing at her, and then tried to put out a cigar in her face. So I actually... Um, and he also borrowed a bunch of money from her and didn't pay her back, and he left. I actually have audio yeah. from that, yeah. <laughs> He's having a good time. He was having a good time. In <laughs> fact, do you want to know what a good time he was having? Yeah. He was having a great time until his team released him after this incident. Oh. And they put forth an announcement <clears throat> how they decry domestic violence. Okay. And uh, then they brought him back to the team a little bit later in the year. <laughs> They had him signing autographs. They had him making YouTube videos for the team. 
<laughs> like they threw him out for almost fucking murdering this woman, trying to put a cigar out on her face. Yeah. But you know, whatever. Come July 2020, Carl. Mm-hmm. Sergio's been living with a 19 year old named Liliana and her 22 month old daughter named Inez for three months. Okay. Now, uh oh. Lillian would later come to talk about how she and her daughter were beaten. And how Sergio broke her cell phones, forced her to have sex with him, and tried to strangle her multiple times leading up to July 8th, 2020. Now, on July 8th, Liliana left Inez alone with Sergio. When she returned, the girl had a scrape uh, scrape on her nose. The next morning, she woke up with big black raccoon eyes. Okay. Now, doctors will tell you, Carl, that that indicates a severe traumatic brain injury. Yeah. Probably from uh, Blunt Force, I would imagine. This woman is 19. She has no clue. She tells her relatives that the girl fell. Nothing really happens. Now, during this week, Liliana had some other problems of her own. Uh She thinks she's pregnant with Sergio's baby. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. So he told her that, and he's like, well, you need to go buy some of those abortion pills. Yeah. Yeah. So she didn't really listen to him because she was dealing with the sick baby. Okay. Because the kid, at this point... Every day is just crying and vomiting all over the house. That sounds bad. And Sergio's like, did you get the fucking abortion pills yet? (laughs) At one point, she describes a situation where she was holding the baby, and Sergio was going to punch her in the face, but she moves, and he punched the baby full force like in the side. Mm. This is a 22-month-old child. Sure. That at this point... Is really not doing too well. Well, she's not defending herself well. You got to k- get your arms up. <laughs> well, then you drop the baby all around. And I mean, neither one is a good choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she didn't listen about these pills. <clears throat> over the next few days, this kid's puking all over the place. So on the 11th, Liliana takes this baby to a pharmacy to see a, like a doctor, I guess like a pharmacist. Mm-hmm. And he gives the baby something for her stomach. When, he co- when she comes back home to the apartment... Because that's the problem. She's got an upset tummy. She's got a belly ache. <laughs> Just have a ripped open fucking oh, pussy. So... Uh, Mexico's a great place. Oh, Jesus Christ. This story was so... Dude, I couldn't even write this story down. Like, my notes are all fucking fucked up because I was just... I had to step back from this. You love this type of show. What are you talking no, about? No, I don't. What? <laughs> Get off on this stuff. You, Just you like mean? the vote. I denounce it. <laughs> so she comes home, right? Yeah. And he goes, where have you been? She goes to the pharmacy. He says, did you get the fucking abortion pills? Good question. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like no, I took the baby here because the baby's throwing up. Yeah, but you could have done both. You're already there. What are you going to so make two trips? He grabs the baby from her and says, I'm not giving you this baby back until you go to the pharmacy <laughs> and go get those abortion pills. <laughs> so Liliana, Do you want two babies or zero babies? <laughs> yeah. So Liliana goes to the back to the pharmacy, comes back to the pill with the pills, and when she returns with them, Sergio stuffed two of them in her mouth with her with his fingers. <laughs> made her swallow it, but... and then picked up the baby and threw her violently at the mother. Oh, weird. Not a good choice. Hmm. So after this, was she the relay man? Why was she? Why was he chucking the baby at her? <laughs> I'm thinking because he's a kind of a dick. Oh, okay. So the little baby goes and crawls and lays on this mat, like in the fetal position, uh-huh. and is just not doing well. It's a toddler, by the way. Twenty two yeah, months. Yeah, I'm baby. saying a baby because it's twenty two months. Because you want it, you want the vote. I know. Oh, I yeah, see what you're I'm doing. Gonna get the vote. This is fucked. I see what you're doing. So. <laughs> The mother comes and lays down next to the baby on the floor. And then Sergio comes in and is like, hey, it's time for you to blow me and fuck me now. Yeah. And she's like, no, I'm trying to take care of my baby. She's not doing well, Sergio. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. You can both sleep on the floor. If I see either one of you on a bed tonight, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. So so he makes this woman Uh lay on the floor next to her baby Uh all night. So that next morning or in the middle of the night, they wake up. And the baby just kept asking for water, and the mom would give her water, and then the baby would throw it up all over. Well, yeah, it's Mexico. <laughs> we don't want to drink that water. That's a good point. Don't drink the water is <laughs> the name of the episode. So the baby's basically not responding to anything. She puts her in the bath. She's not responding. Sergio even tries to give this baby CPR. Oh. Uh, that's when they asked the neighbor for help to take them to the Red Cross. When she got to the hospital, she died. 
Okay. The cause of death was determined to be shock due to a ruptured renal artery resulting from a sexual assault. What? I thought she was being thrown around. He fucked that baby. Oh, God. Okay. And caused internal injuries, internal bleeding inside of this baby. So that over those days, she was bleeding so badly inside, there was not enough blood for her little heart to pump. And she died. This episode could be hard to listen to. Not to mention the blunt force trauma to the head, which caused the raccoon eyes. Jeez Louise. All sorts of terrible things that they found. Now, what happens when uh, he gets arrested for this? Well... He explains to everybody that it was the mother who did it. The mother fucked the kid to death? She has a history of being sexually assaulted. <laughs> okay. These are arguments. Yeah. She has a history of being sexually assaulted, so she knows how to do it you better rethink- than I would know how to you do wanna it. You want to rethink that one a little I bit? I baseball. <laughs> baseball. Psh. Does the whole- I mean. <laughs> well, that's retarded. Yeah. Yeah. So, long story short, he was sentenced to 60 years in Mexican prison. Okay. And uh, from what I understand, folks, if this makes it a little bit easier to vote for this fucking guy because he's a creep, apparently, according to all reports, having a great time in prison. Oh, yeah? Yep. He's got uh, a bunch of girlfriends who bring him shit. Oh, nice. And he's just fucking living it up in prison. Captain of the kickball team. In Mexico, yep. (laughs) I'm having the time of my life, Michael. Oh, man. That's great. Fuck that guy. <laughs> All right. That is my creep this week. Sergio Mitri. If you don't vote for him, you have no conscience whatsoever. Weird. I'm just trying everything. Here. I know. I can tell you. I'm you trying not like everything losing. here. Lost two in a row and you're getting this desperate You now. cheated last week. I that did was not cheating. cheat. What are you talking about? I know for a fact people are cheating for you. How do you know that for a fact? What evidence do you have? Because there was well, one vote more than Pat? Well, I'm going to tell you how I know. Yeah. Hold on. But, but first, okay. we're going to get to the voicemail segment. Oh, okay. Uh, we do some voicemails? Yeah. Let's. Okay. Uh, brought to you by our friends in Syracuse. The Creep Off voicemail segment is brought to you by the city of Syracuse. A fire truck was stolen over the weekend. Authorities aren't worried, though, because Syracuse is the only city where home fires actually improve value. See you in Syracuse. Hey, I want to point out, uh, listening to Brian McBride there, yes, that we just did a bonus episode for people on our Patreon, and we put Vince McMahon in the Hall of Fame. We have powers. We do have powers, because the very next day, Vince McMahon is done Let me tell you something. <laughs> to get that man out of that company. Wow. He is the company. He still owns 80% of the stock. Yeah. No, he's, he is he's that company. Not, he may be not the chairman. He owns that company. Yeah. No matter what happens. I'm going to SummerSlam Saturday in that's, Nashville, so I'm going to wear my Vince t-shirt. That's exciting. Just to see if anybody punches me in the face. Very good. Um, all those Do you have a Carl Sucks sign this time with you? WWE, those pussies have banned signs. What? That's the only reason to go to these things, to hold up a sign. You don't like to go for the sport <laughs> and the pageantry? Well, um, anyway, it was a very fun episode. We had Brian McBride in here. We had Justin Brown and the four of us uh, inducted Vince McMahon into the Creep Off Hall of Fame. So a lot of people commented on the Patreon yes. that uh, they want us to do a part two. Okay. And uh, because there's was lots of things. Was that you who was? No. <laughs> you just want to talk about Vince McMahon. Over more. and over <laughs> again, I commented. Yeah. So what I'm thinking for next month is I have a... Uh, Pedophile Hunter Theater, almost ready to go. Okay. And I figure we'll do a scum parade. Uh, we'll do a scum stream with that. And then we'll also do, next month in August, a Vince McMahon part, part two? two. Yeah. All right. We'll finish it up. All because right. There's more to talk about, huh? Dude, there's so many creepy things that this man has done behind the scenes and like in front of the camera. Yeah. There's plenty to talk about. Right. We'll get a good laugh. This time, no one's invited. It'll just be me and you, Sounds palsy. Good. We'll have a nice <laughs> Sounds time. Sounds like a good idea. So how do I know that you have people cheating for you? I'll tell you how I know, Carl. Hey, yeah. Uh, I personally was rigging the votes for Carl for the uh, the dairy, the cow bikini episode. And, motherfucker, someone else was rigging the votes for Vinny. Every time I would push Carl over the top, some other motherfucker would come in and push Vinny over the top. So, you know, I, I'm just saying, yeah, maybe I was doing shenanigans for Carl, but obviously someone else was doing shenanigans for Vinny before I even started doing this. This is the first time I've done it. Anyway, uh, don't call me back. Bye. 
We knew this is what was happening, Betty. Remember, we had like a thousand Stop votes. This. <laughs> we had like a thousand votes that one week. And I'm like, all right, this is just ridiculous now. They all came in Sunday night. <laughs> it's like, okay, this, this is obviously going on. Uh, I have a, uh, a voicemail to play. Please. From our buddy Tab. Tab Burks. Oh, I love Tab. This is a uh, voicemail for the Creep Off. First off, I want to say, Vinny, thank you for the uh, coffee mug. I've been using it all week. It very adequately holds coffee and dispenses it into my mouth. And, uh, you know, I got that for supporting the show on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the creep off. When I, uh, Patreon WATP, all I got was shitty episodes of that fat, unfunny pedo veto. So, uh, that sucks. But I've got a question for you. You would think Penny. that's what the creep off uh, Have you ever gotten one of those take and bake pizzas from like the grocery store and you get home and you're thinking, I really don't want to waste 18 or 22 minutes baking this in the oven and just like rolled it up like a taco and shoved it down your fucking hole. Anyway, thank you. Fuck you. Bye. Have you ever done that, Vinny? Okay, so when I was in college, right? <laughs> yep. I had a mini fridge, and uh, I could only get like those small pizzas, uh, like those those terrible ones. That sucks. Yeah, and there was I would have to go to like the common room to go bake something if I wanted to bake something. Mm-hmm. But I did have a microwave, mm-hmm. so I found out every now and again, late night, you come home, you had some beers, take one of those suckers, slap it in the microwave, Ugh. and roll that sucker. Oh, up. gross! And nineteen uh, year old Vinny was a happy boy. <laughs> Just soggy, gooey, gross. And just the whole uh, birds, third degree birds. All <laughs> yeah, over the side right. Of my face. It's freezing cold in the middle and burning you. Yeah, it's great. College sucked, man. Uh, I have another voice, man. All right. Hey, Carl. This is actually a creep off comment. Um, I, being a very big Drew and Mike fan, mm-hmm. um, I got the idea you should invite Drew. Onto the creep off. We should. He would be fucking perfect for it. He loves true crime. He's like one of the biggest true crime guys out there. I think he would fit in fucking perfectly. And but fine. I don't know. Pass it by Drew. Float it by float it by him. Because I think Drew and you and Vinny on the creep off is a fucking winner. Love the show. See ya. I would love to get Drew Lane on the show. It was difficult to get him on. Who are these podcasts? We finally got him on for like 20 minutes, but... We could try. If I'm gonna ask him, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the guy. You ever, you ever <laughs> even mentioned the creep off on that show when you go? Around I every have, other week? I have from time to time. Yes, I do mention the Why creep off. Why don't you play off. that voicemail for him on the show next? Maybe time I will. There. That's a good idea. Maybe yeah. I can pressure him into coming on here. I like that. He is a huge true crime fan. He calls it, he calls it Drew crime. He does it all the time on his oh. show. So you know what? He Pass. would be good. He'd be good on this. Pass. Drew crime. I'm out. <laughs> Okay, I didn't mean to offend your comedic from, senses. <laughs> I'm just kidding. From from the man who created Vintage. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't like Drew Cry. That's too easy. Uh, piece of shit I am. All right. Let's see what we got here. Idea for the Wheel of Consequence. An idea for a consequence is uh, Dr. Steve diagnosing the loser. Uh, I don't know. I, th- I think that's about it. All right, fuck yourself equally. Um, yes, but Vinny Winnie, uh, thanks, fellas. Bye. That's a good idea. I was uh, messaging with Doctor Steve this morning because I always do. Yep. Uh, he really wants to get on Tommy's show at MSCS Media. Well, I was actually <laughs> going to say it's way better idea than the consequence idea I had. Oh, what was that? Get Tommy face surgery. <laughs> I mean, it can't cost that much. <laughs> I'm definitely going to rig the vote. That's going to be on the fucking wheel of consequences. Holy, Holy fuck shit. You, <laughs> I'll be cheating up a storm if you we do that. Get, you can get that same face just taking a car buffer to your head. <laughs> if I just sat out in the sun too long, I would oh, look like him. shit. All right. Uh... <laughs> Somebody uh, called Anyway, the- that's not a bad consequence, though, having Dr. Steve, like... Diagnose us. Diagnose us. That would be brutal. <laughs> I have a feeling there's a few character flaws. Pre diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do that one. <laughs> yeah. What a challenge. I finally did it, guys. I come up <clears throat> I caught up with the creep off. Hey. I can actually they're in real time, both for my pal Vinny. No. Oh. And Carl. He hung up on you. Excelsior. True believers. Good stuff. Any more voice over there, Carl? No, that's okay, all I have. So last week I forgot to respond to something. Okay, and uh, a lot of people gave me shit because good uh, two episodes ago. Good, 
I said something incorrectly uh-huh. when we were talking about Grace Kelly. I said that Grace Kelly was the queen, became the, the uh, princess or queen of Morocco. It turned out it was Monaco, two different places. <laughs> and everybody on fucking that has ever listened to the show and seen a map had to fucking call me to tell me I was wrong. <laughs> Vinny's an idiot. <laughs> Vinny, Monaco. Say it with me. Monaco, not Morocco. Grace Kelly, Princess of Monaco. Ain't no fact check in. All right. Thank you, fuck you, bye. There was like 10 of those. I'm only playing the one. That guy did it the best. <laughs> Good. All right. I get it. Grace Kelly was the Princess of Monaco. Great. You're dumb. Stupid as they come. You're so a dumb guy. I got something in the mail that I have to. Uh, oh yeah, Prep Boy Rick sent us something. Yeah, and what a nice, what a nice surprise. He sent a little letter here, and he had sent me a thing saying there was a package coming, and to open it on air. Mm-hmm. And then I opened it up, and there was like a little letter. So I'm gonna read it. It says, "Hey Vinny, it's Prep Boy Rick. I just want to say thanks for the creep off and all the fun and disturbing moments you bring on the show. Carl sucks." And I figured since he always gets a bunch of gifts from WATP, what? you deserve a little bit of love. It's not, it's not true As it goes a long way. I meant to send you a signed copy of Tom Meyer's album, but he retracted the order from eBay. So I went with this instead. Hope you like it. <laughs> That's or funny. don't. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. That's funny. Call me back, Prep Boy Rick. Now, Prep Boy Rick... If you if anyone tries to send me Tom Meyer CDs, that's fucking grounds for a fucking fist fight. Yeah. I don't want that garbage. What am I going to do with a Tom Meyer CD? The same thing I do with my Stuttering John CD that Tucker Dixon gave me. What are you going to do? Fucking shellac it and put it on the mantle? I'd fucking no. rather shellac a goddamn turd. It's but in a landfill way, somewhere. But I got two things. There's like this little, uh, little envelope. I'm going to open this up and okay. see what's going on. Cool. Prep and and just Rick, so you know, be, thoughtful. I don't know why he thinks I'm getting all these gifts on WATP. I've gotten a lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped. That's about it. That's my big booty. Ooh, a Kiwi Farm sticker. Oh, cool. Laughter is contagious. All right. Very cool. I like that a lot. Ooh. Holy shit. What do we got here? Un- Zap to the extreme coin. I am now the owner of two Zap to the extreme coins. Chris Neat. Chad. Ooh. <laughs> if anybody else wants to send me pure silver in the mail, please do. Thank you, Prep Boy Rick. That is incredibly thoughtful. And then he sent me this. I'm not sure what this could be. That's fascinating. Please go on. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's some sort of sign. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we fucking go. I'm just going to get this ready. More funny. Oh, cool shit. What do we got? He what cho- do we got here? It's a chopped up license plate. Oh, nice. That's cool as hell. That is Thanks, cool. Prep boy Rick. I thought for sure that was going to be something at my expense, but I was wrong. No, this is dope as that hell. That is dope. I also need to thank Chrissy because she brought me this. Yeah, that's fun too. Live, yeah. laugh, love. I keep Creep that off. right here, and I'm going to put this one <laughs> up above my workstation. This is so much. This is fucking dope, Prep boy Rick. Thank you, pal. Uh, you ready to do a scum parade, Carl? <clears throat> I am, Vinny. I am ready if you are ready. Dude, hit that music. Watch out for the scum parade. Scum parade. Oh, no, it's scum parade. Scum parade. Look out for the scum parade. Making Vinny's day. Day. <sighs> So last week we did a story about a woman who came out of a coma and her brother was arrested for trying to murder her with a hatchet. Two years earlier, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he got away with it. Here's the update. You ready for this? Yeah. Brother's dead. Oh. Did he kill himself? Died in custody. They said he Uh, wasn't feeling good. They took him to the hospital and he dropped dead. Interesting. So there's your update on that story, ladies and gentlemen. Justice. Maybe he'll wake up in a couple of years and, and finger his sister. Not in the way you're thinking, Vinny. Aww, not in that way. All right. That'd be fun, though, if that happened. Speaking of fingering, <laughs> a reverend has been fined and placed on the sex offender re- uh, registry for fucking a vacuum. Some are on and some deranged stories that are very strange. Uh, you hear about this? Uh, you hear about this one over here? <laughs> 
John Is the Jeffs. church not supplying enough children for this guy to fuck? He's got to resort not. to fucking a vacuum cleaner? 74-year-old year retired veteran in England was naked apart from a pair of women's stockings mm -hmm. when he was caught fucking a vacuum cleaner's nozzle, the court heard. A shocked churchgoer saw him committing the act while attending a talk about Asperger's syndrome at the church. I have to say, Vinny, we are lucky that we're not sexually attracted to vacuum cleaners. I've never seen a, a dust buster and gotten a chubby. Hmm. It must be a weird way to live life. It's it's not normal. It can't be good. You know, better than the kids. It is better of than course. the kids. Of course. Fuck the vacuum, sir. <laughs> Your holiness, whatever the fuck they call you. Cleanup's Just easy. That's the best part about fucking a vacuum. So here's the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of that now. I'm like, actually, now that I think about it, <laughs> clean up is a snap. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. So it's gross. This guy is fucking the vacuum cleaner, and this woman just walks by this open door yep. where this man is doing this. Jacking it, jacking it, jacking it, jack. Spanking it, jacking it, spanking it, smack. He looks up at the woman. Yep. And just kept fucking the vacuum. <laughs> now, when the police asked him why he continued to do it after he was seen, he said he, quote, felt naughty. 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 It's a bit naughty. A court heard magistr uh, the court heard that he was in his office at the place, at the church, when he was spotted. A witness walked past his office, said they saw him completely naked, except for the lady's underwear. He accepted in a police interview that he was touching himself and fucking the vacuum cleaner, but, quote, I didn't think anybody would see me. Sure. That's his time. Now, his uh, excuse for this. Yeah. His uh, his barrister said he's still coming to terms with the loss of his wife at a young age and was in a lot of pain because he was ignoring his health and his diabetes was not medicated. That's too many excuses. You know what I mean? Like, just, have, just give pick me one. one. Pick one of those things. It like, can't be all those things. Tell me the vacuum looked hot today. Yes, exactly. Maybe I'll believe yeah, you. Yeah, what was it wearing? <laughs> to get, come up with something a little more believable. I've never known anyone who who was widowed who then goes to resort to fucking household items. Do you know? Do you know what the answer is when they say to you, "Why did you do it?" The voice has made me. Yes, so that is the just answer. one thing. Correct. Make it completely crazy. Make them have to prove that you're lying. Don't give them every fucking crazy excuse in the world. Act crazy. The magistrate said uh, when they brought it to trial, they had no idea. The woman who, I am sorry, I did a terrible job on my notes this week, ladies That's and gentlemen. That's I think we covered this story. Yeah, either way, he gets charged <laughs> yeah. $200 in compensation to the woman who caught him. He yeah, had to pay her 200 bucks. 200 pounds, yeah. 200 pounds. Which is interesting. I would watch a guy jerk off on a vacuum for 200 bucks. Wouldn't you? No. Oh, how, what's the number? What number would you put of that? How, how many dollars do you need? 30 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> At least 45. Yeah, okay. All right, let's go to Taco Bell, Carl. Let's go to uh, Dallas, Texas. Hold on. Can people call us or write in and tell us what amount of money they would watch a guy fuck a vacuum for? Now I'm curious about this. I think 200 bucks is a fair, is reasonable. All right, go ahead, Vinny. Taco I Bell. I have a silver coin right here. <laughs> okay. Taco Bell, Dallas, Texas. Yes. This story is completely insane. Yep. This is why, just go to a restaurant, you know, pick a nice one with a tablecloth. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go to fucking Taco Bell, especially this one. Two Taco Bell customers say they sustained serious burns when a manager at their Dallas store poured scalding water on them as they complained about an incomplete order. Okay. They're suing Taco Bell. Uh-huh. The lawsuit says that the child, one of them is a minor named Brittany Davis, and the other one is known only as CT, mm -hmm. were left with permanent skin damage and lifelong change to their appearance from the incident. Okay. Now. What I find curious already, Vinny, is that there's no criminal charges, the but they're the Dallas suing Police Department, Taco Bell. The Dallas Police Department is investigating the incident currently. Okay. And um, the department said a Taco Bell employee also claims to have been assaulted. So the lawsuit, what they're saying, what the cops are saying, are all relatively the same thing. They said that, that uh, maybe that? this kid came in and maybe was acting out of line. Uh-huh. That okay. could very well be. But if a 17-year-old is acting out of line, 
do you throw scolding hot water on them? You got to have fun, man. I've worked in restaurants. Yeah, it's and true. And you, you got to find ways to make it fun because those shifts can get long and grueling. So the incident occurred on Juneteenth Eve Eve, which is June 17th, when the pair <laughs> failed to receive the correct order at a Dallas Taco Bell. Is that in Bell. your notes? No. I just, that was literally top of my head to fuck with you. Uh, at the Dal- Dallas Taco Bell, it went through the drive through a second and third time in an unsuccessful attempt to get their order fixed. So they keep going through the drive through over and over again. Yes. Which, because by the, the order way, wasn't right. A Dallas Taco Bell, we're probably talking about 15 to 20 minutes each time you're going through there. So I can imagine you're getting a little frustrated. Let me tell you something. If you're in Dallas and you want to go to Taco Bell, just drive to Mexico. Just keep That's going true. if you want a taco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, there are other places to get tacos There's, in that area. Yes. <laughs> go to Taco Bueno. Taco Bueno. Mwah. Muy fantastico. Um, now. Yes. According to the lawsuit. Yeah. The two parked, walked up to the location's dining room, which was closed. Yeah, it was locked. They let the, an employee let them in. It makes no sense. Okay. Then, oh, you're complaining about your order? Come on in, sir. <laughs> and then locked the door behind them. Well, I guess it's two women, right? I'm sorry. I shouldn't say sir. They said, we want our order to be corrected. The employee refused. Now, this is according to the lawsuit. Yes. One right. employee then apparently challenged CT to a fight. Uh-huh. And then a manager who they hadn't spoken with poured a bucket of hot water on the two, dousing CT's face and getting the water on the chest of both of the plaintiffs. The suit said the two tried to flee, but they were stalled because they locked the door behind them. So they're locked in with this manager with scolding hot water. Who's like just fucking like, I'm, he was sitting by a stove like waiting for the next kettle to boil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's loading up his super soaker. You just hear the whistle. <laughs> oh, that's not good. They're in trouble now. <laughs> So put this guy at the southern border. Holy shit! This guy would keep the illegals to get out. The fuck out! They're saying. Yeah. At this point, the manager returns with a second bucket of yeah. hot water, <laughs> and then he threw it at them. But somehow they they were able to get the door unlocked uh-huh. before that hit them. The fines lunch. Now restaurant workers followed the injured pair outdoors and reportedly laughed, taunted, and clapped at them before they could drive away. Now, let me ask you this question. <laughs> they were having a good time. If you're sitting in the drive-thru waiting for your fucking food and this is happening. <laughs> yeah, you're watching these, these employees taunt these people who have just been third-degree burned on their faces. Guys' faces <laughs> melted <laughs> like fucking Raiders of the Lost yeah, Ark. They look like Nazis and, and Raiders. Yeah! <laughs> Get out of here, Chalupa bitch. The suit claims Davis also suffered injury to her brain function. <laughs> okay. Now, There's a lot of trauma. And, and that triggered at least 10 seizures before she made it to Parkland <laughs> Hospital. CT had burns to her face, chest, legs, and arms, and stomach, according to the lawsuit, which said her mother removed mirrors from their home because her daughter couldn't bear to see her own face. All right, so this is on Yahoo News. Yeah. And I just want to point out, there's a ton of comments underneath this article. Every single person commenting is on the side of the employees. They all think, <laughs> I swear to God, they all think that these people made this whole fucking thing up because none of it makes any sense at all. And the fact that they want $1 million from Taco Bell, it, it's all very suspect. If they were really burned to the point where their faces are deformed. This says that some of Davis's <laughs> skin came off with yeah. her clothes. Yeah, right. If, that, if that's the case, they're getting way more than $1 million. From Taco Bell. None of it makes any fucking sounds sense. Sounds like a bad lawyer. There were no criminal charges. I it just seems so silly to me, this whole thing. So I wanna put it I'm gonna put this out here. The reason why this story is in the scum parade is because I think everyone involved here is probably a creep. Yes, exactly. If you're going inside to the store because you didn't get the you know the third taco. I'm including you wanted, the people in the drive thru. All fucking yes. creeps. Everyone involved. <laughs> Agreed. So uh, let's go over to England, shall we, Carl? Let's go back to let's England. Let's go back to England. We started there. A metropolitan police officer caught spying on a woman in the changing room of a London branch of Primark has been handed a suspended sentence. Swali Chahadri, 36, was, called, was caught out when the victim spotted his phone being used to spy on her at the store in the Southside Shopping Center. After he was arrested, officers found a catch of images of, child, of children being sexually abused at his house. With infants said to be among the victims. So am I to believe we can't even trust the police now? Is that what you're telling me here, Vinny? He got a 10-month in prison sentence for this. Come on, England. Get your shit together. And then they suspended it for 18 months. So check this out. 
Yeah. When they caught him, the female complainant was in the fitting room trying on clothes. She stated she heard a rustling in the fitting rooms next door to her. Mm-hmm. Under the benches was a gap between the fitting rooms. She saw a black mobile phone with the camera facing her. She saw the camera appearing to follow her as she was moving. She began to scream, are you recording me? And she says there was a response from the cubicle next to her saying, no. Nope. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> That's a awkward whistling. <laughs> just, just trying out a shirt. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't fit. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll try another one. She comes out and told her boyfriend. And uh, then the defendant was challenged and they wouldn't let him leave until the other police got there. And that's when they took his phone and found the other images. Oops. Yeah. So they searched his home, found all, you know, thousands of images of child porn. And then also. It said possession of extreme pornography involving animals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I don't know about you, Vinny, but when it comes to animals, I prefer softcore porn. I want the sex to be implied. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the Skinamax version with uh, animal porn, but, you know, that's just me. Yeah, it doesn't need to be I'm all classy. this hardcore shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was so funny, extreme pornography involving animals. Like, Yeah, you had me at involving animals. I get it. That's pretty extreme. I don't think that this guy uh, made a lot of good decisions here. Nope. If you do have those things on your home hard drives, um, try not to be, like, caught filming people while they're getting changed in mm-hmm. public. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a thought mm-hmm. for you. No one ever thinks they're going to get caught. Is that what it is? Must be. Yeah. Hey, guess where we're going to finish up the scum parade? Oh, I got to imagine we're going to Florida. I imagine Sarah Dunlap's neighbors hate her. <laughs> you think? Yeah. I'm just going to go out on a limb. Sarah, we love you, though. You're the best possible kind of creep. There's a lot of broom handles hitting walls and ceilings where she lives. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> In Palm Beach County, a 57-year-old named Guillermo Silva yes. allegedly killed his in-laws and recorded the murder at the time his wife, Gabriel Lagos, was out of town. On the night of July 2nd, 2022, Palm Beach County deputies reported to a deceased person's call. They found the bodies of the Lagos parents. Both bodies received blunt force trauma to the head and face, but the mother was found positioned on the bed nude on her knees (laughs) with severe blunt force trauma to her torso, arms, and face. Now, according to the sheriff's office, the person who reported the deceased bodies was Gabriella's eldest son, which would be Guillermo Silva's stepson. He had swung by his grandparents' house to drop off some money. Gabriella's son waited in front of the house and blew his horn for his grandparents to come out. Yeah. Now, according to <laughs> uh, Silva's recollection in an affidavit obtained, he was awakened by his son and had a knife on him, fearing that his son was there to harm him. He claims he was defending himself when he was overwhelmed and held until police arrived. Right. So, however, his son named victim number three in the document, said that Silva came out and told him that they were inside when he ventured into the house. Silva had his knife ready and threatened him. The end result was the same in both stories. Guillermo Silva was restrained by his son and held until police could arrive. At that time, he is said to have confessed to his son that he had killed the two elderly people. In speaking with law enforcement, he claimed that he didn't know what started the altercation with his son, but that he had been drinking earlier in the day and didn't remember killing whoa, anyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not ruin day drinking is good name. Let's not drag day drinking through the mud here, sir. I will stand by a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, that's But you up. will not be smirched day drinking. <laughs> what the now, fuck, buddy? It's also worth noting that Silva allegedly recorded the beatings of his mother-in-law on on his mother-in-law's phone and showed it to his wife (laughs) since she had returned from Chile and said she was shown the video at some point. 
and speaking with Gabriella said that Silver was eager to show her something. He recorded videos for me to see my parents dead. I can't believe it. He's a monster <laughs> that he could do that to two old people. Lagos' mother was 79 and her father was 80 and they had just celebrated their 65th anniversary. Oh my god, anniversary. all you had to do was give it a minute, buddy. You didn't have to go in there and beat the shit out of them. Uh, it, people go to Florida to grow old and die. I don't even see what the problem is here. At the at the time of the murder, her adopted 11-year-old son was also inside the house but wasn't hurt. <laughs> He's being charged with uh, two counts of homicide and one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now, <laughs> two counts of being hilarious. <laughs> Being a joker. Yeah. That's, Duke out to being a practical joker. That's hysterical. So there's a GoFundMe campaign for the uh, funeral expenses. How's that doing? Uh, it has raised $1,300 out of a $50,000 goal. Mm. Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> Not going well. Okay. <laughs> that was so evil. All right. That is this week's I do. Right? I do want to tell everybody. Alcohol is bad. You shouldn't drink alcohol. Because you will murder your in-laws. Even if they have it coming, you still shouldn't do that. My in-laws are very smart to be temperate people. Yeah, and to live thousands of miles away from you. <laughs> Probably a good I'll move. get there eventually. <laughs> yeah. I ain't walking, but I'll get there. Either are they way, going to uh, SummerSlam, wherever the fuck you're going to? Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to go watch Ric Flair die on Sunday. Dude, Ric Flair's final match, and Vinny will be there. Well, if he survives it, I guarantee you will do another one. I was going to say, there's no way. This is, this is like the, the who. Final match part two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. His tag team partner is Tommy Thayer. Okay. Tommy Thayer. That's a kiss joke. That's the guy who took over for Ace Freely. Right. Yeah, so he's he's a keep going, take it too long. He's going to bring in Tommy Thayer because he'll see. do anything. Okay. And that was my joke that wasn't good. So that's this week's episode of The Creep Off. I want to say from the bottom of my fat pig heart, I love all of you. Thank you for listening. Check out the latest Patreon episode. It's a lot of fun. Um, I hope that you enjoy it. And if you do want to support the show, visit patreon.com. You do get some cool merch, as Tab pointed out. There's also... And if you do sign up, you want to be a cuz, cuzaroo, cuzaroo. We do appreciate the cuzaroos out there. Well, why don't you come and come and roll with the big boys? Yeah, I want you to join the Avian on True Believers, ladies and gentlemen. Or you can be creep maniac if you want. Or you can be a scum parade merry marcher. It's up to you. We love we you. Just all. Appreciate you. Yes. So we are going to be back next week. At some point during the week, I'm not sure which day the show is going to be. It will right. not be Monday next week. Because you're going to be too busy watching wrestling and fanboying out, yelling about how it's still real to me, damn it, and all the shit that you do at wrestling. No, I'll be driving back from that at that point. But listen, here's the deal, pal. I was thinking, maybe, you know how many episodes I've done with this show without you because you've done other shit? Maybe you should do a creep off. I could do that. Yeah, I could find a co-host to come on and do a creep off. All right. All right. Well, you could do that. Carl's going to be against unnamed opponent next week. This is week. interesting that you decided to wait for while we were on the show to put me on the spot like this. Yes. Yeah. You, you're giving me one week to figure this out. What an asshole. Do you remember how like before we were doing we talked earlier? I said, we'll talk after the show. Yeah, I know. I, just I asked met... you what you wanted to do. You're like, we'll talk about it after the show. No, you want to talk about it on the show. I yeah, see. Yeah, because I knew you couldn't say no this way. Uh, uh, what a dick. That's why I'm the people's champ, baby. All right, so I'm maybe we'll be back Monday. The one who should apologize. All right, yeah, I'll I'll find a co-host. I'll, I'll reach out to Stuttering John see if he wants to do the creep off with me. That'll be one thousand dollars. <laughs> he would do it for a couple grand, I bet. You, my friend, have committed a crime. It'll be great if you got Stuttering John to do the show with you. That would be amazing. And you can't say, "Hey, welcome to this week's edition of the Creep Off." Do do um, do up <laughs> do do um, do up. Be awesome. It's just being a soundboard. That's a good idea. That would be funny. Yeah, maybe like a Patrick Michael involved, And it would just too. be him talking about Donald Trump. His creep would be Donald Trump. <laughs> and you yeah. could just play. I think I could probably pull that one off for sure. <laughs> it's a five-minute episode of the show. <laughs> I'll tell you what, dude. I'll even send you the scum parade stories. Oh, you will? Yeah. Okay. I'll send you all this. I got I got a plenty. A bunch of people. Cran Baruni. Shout out to Cran Baruni. Shout out to Alex. You guys always yes. send fire every week. I love oh, you guys. Oh, these stories are, are fantastic. They send me great stuff all the time. They really uh, liven up my Monday mornings. Oh, they certainly do. <laughs> they make my tummy hurt. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So uh, we'll be back next week, I guess. And uh, until then, act right. Vote at Reddit. Visit thecreepoff.com. What's the score right now? Three to two? Three to two. All right. I'm making my comeback. Vote for Carl on our uh, subreddit. 
You think you could get away with that without having legal legal ramifications? You're out of your fucking mind. I just wanted to play that because it makes That's me how much laugh. I don't care. <laughs> All and right. That's fine. It's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. Gagia. It's because I care. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, I honestly don't care. But that's how little I give a shit <laughs> about this. It's the creep off. It's dumb. I do tell jokes. Some better than others. May your enemies be cursed in your podcast adventures.